Gupta, and I'll start. Yes. Uh, so, on behalf of the Citizens Forum, Kolkata, it is a great pleasure uh, to introduce Professor Onindita Mukhopadhyay, Professor of History in the University of Hyderabad, as the speaker this evening. Uh, so, uh, Professor Mukhopadhyay has uh, earned her PhD degree from the School of Oriental and African Studies, London, and um, her book, Behind the Mask, Cultural Identity of the Legal Subject, was published by OUP in 2012. Uh, she has published with Orient Black Swan uh, in 2019. Her book, uh, very intriguing title that it has, uh, Children's Games, uh, Adults Gambit. Vidya Shagor to Shottajit Rai. And um, interestingly, she's also a translator, having translated Robindranath Shesher Kobita and short stories of Sharad Chandra, both published by Rupa. So without uh, losing much time, I would invite uh, Professor Mukhopadhyay to uh, give us her lecture this uh, evening, Ram Mohan Roy and stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. I can only apologize for my delay. I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to speak at this very, very privileged podium, which has a very long connection, in fact, uh, a very deep connection with an iconic figure, uh, Ram Mohan Roy, with whom Quite a few of us have had a very long term, um, uh, to put it a little uh, frivolously, a very, very long term, term love affair. Um, uh, we feel that uh, Ram Mohan Roy was um, uh, actually um, a very central figure in the way we got introduced to the very nature of modernity. And uh, we do need to understand that his thoughts on political subjecthood or, or, or political citizenship and uh, the notion of the state uh, was very, very central to the way uh, modern Indians post Ram Mohan Roy uh, understood the very complex relationship between um, the individual the and the state. I would also like to, at this point, uh, say that Ram Hun Roy did not actually step into the notion of citizenship. He was the, the, the occupier of a pre-colonial notion of the relationship between the state and an individual, which was subject. It was Ram Mohan Roy who expanded the understanding of subject and began to bracket it by looking at what the individual could do in order to occupy a far more proactive position vis-a-vis -vis the state. He also, for I think a very important modern perspective, understood that the state is not necessarily positioned in the body of an individual, however venerable, the genealogical tree of that individual may be, in this case, the Mughals. I think he was the first very important um, uh, uh, visionary who began to understand the difference between the structure of a state and an individual or an institution that represented the state. In pre-colonial nature of things, the king 
or the prince or the queen uh, in case uh, very, very rarely uh, there was no king, uh, the queen would actually in his or her person represent the state. And uh, we find very, very interesting reference to this very strange kind of uh, collapsing of the uh, king and a territorial unity, which he projected through his bodily person. So the state was embodied in the person of the uh, emperor or the king or the prince, or, a regional uh, understanding. If we actually look at uh, our epics or if we look at our uh, medieval histories, we are going to see this very important uh, equation uh, in all our sources, whether it be Islamic sources or whether it be uh, scriptural stroke Brahminic sources. Um, it was very definitely a very new moment for Roy to understand cognitively. And I think this is a very, very uh, important uh, step forward where he began to uh, separate the structure of the state and the person who embodied a legitimate, a very, very legitimate um, uh, um, uh, connection uh, or, or uh, uh, not just a connection perhaps, but also, uh, you know, uh, a projection of the state in his person. And uh, in Ramon Roy's case, uh, his uh, sovereign or his suzerain was uh, one of the very, very uh, lesser Mughals, Akbar II, a young man, uh, who was also uh, quite a weak uh, ruler and completely under the thumb of the East India Company officials. And uh, by the time we come to the 1820, uh, uh, in the 1820s, 1827, 1828 to be precise, we actually begin to find uh, the um, East India Company uh, dismissing the position of the um, um, Mughal, um, uh, you know, uh, shall we say the Mughal echo on the throne uh, 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 as, as the king of Delhi, uh, not the Mughal emperor. We must not forget that the East India Company uh, in 1827, 1828, had actually reached its position uh, at this point uh, uh, through the uh, uh, royal uh, uh, permissions uh, granted to uh, the East India Company uh, in the um, 16, uh, uh, you know, in the in the uh, 17th century, early part of the 17th century. Uh, we must keep in mind that in, it was in 1615 that Thomas Rowe had come to um, uh, um, uh, Agra uh, in order to, uh, and and uh, to you know uh, to seek. Um, uh, he had he had visited the seat uh, the the. Um, uh, Mughal seat in Delhi, uh, and also um, he had uh, made a very important, um, uh, uh, you know, um, request uh, for for granting permission for trade. So from 1615 to 1827, uh, 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 slightly more than 200 years, from a supplicant at the feet of uh, Jehangir, we find, uh, 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 you know, the same East India Company. Um, uh, dismiss uh, the Mughal uh, seat of power as, uh, uh, you know, Delhi-centric, uh, not India-centric, which is, um, if one thinks about it, uh, which is a tremendous turn of fortune. And uh, yet, uh, Ramon Roy, uh, I would uh, suggest here, uh, while uh, uh, having a very um, small um, um, uh, patronage uh, from East India Company officials regarding uh, very high positions uh, in in uh, uh, in um, 
some, uh, you know, in uh, rendering help uh, to Digby and uh, looking at uh, correspondence, also learning English. Um, he was actually not an East India Company employee. Uh, I would actually uh, look at uh, Ramon Roy as a singularly independent character, very, very conscious that he was straddling two different zones of power, right? He was very, very clear that his suzerain or his sovereign was actually upper, the second. Whether he was the king of Delhi uh, as the East India Company designated him did not matter to him. He was also very clear about the East India Company's attempts to further erode the, uh, the, the, the status of this rather helpless, quote unquote, King of Delhi, because it was exactly around this point, uh, 1820s, uh, uh, that the East India Company began to toy with the idea of reducing Akbar II's stipend and make him leave Red Fort and uh, 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 make Red Fort the center of um, uh, East India Company affairs, right? You know, so uh, it, 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 was, it was therefore a very important decision of Ram Mohan Roy to intercede uh, at the uh, level of uh, uh, a legal, um, uh, uh, at the level of a legal intervention, and suggest to Akbar II that he actually needed to talk to the Queen, not the East India Company, who does not have sovereign power in India. This is something which East India Company officials once again resented very, very deeply. <laughs> they realized that there was a very powerful intellectual who actually understood the representative uh, 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 nature of the presence of the East India Company in India. And it was actually the, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, the sovereignty of the, uh, um, you know, of, of the English uh, 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 sovereign uh, that was central uh, to power uh, uh, of, in England, uh, in uh, Great Britain. Uh, it was actually uh, uh, not in the power of East India Company to take these decisions arbitrarily or uh, uh, without uh, proper uh, legal uh, ratification from the uh, metropolis center, uh, from the court of directors, uh, and to be and to be uh, uh, validated by an act of the parliament. Right? You know. So you actually have Ramohan Roy uh, uh, bringing in this very very uh, sharp tension between representative powers of the East India Company and their illegality. Uh, in uh, their uh, uh, arbitrary um, uh, decision to reduce the stipend of, uh, uh, quote unquote, the King of Delhi. And uh, it is uh, on the behest of um, uh, uh, Akbar II in the initial period that uh, uh, Ramon Roy was, uh, uh, you know, officially employed um, uh, 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 as the uh, representative from uh, the Mughal court to uh, talk to the British sovereign and very, very importantly, and uh, to uh, uh, make uh, 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 clear uh, the, the nature of the uh, treaty uh, that had been uh, drawn up uh, in, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, through the, through the last uh, 70, 80 years, which uh, had absolutely uh, no uh, a word in it of uh, slashing stipends or uh, taking away the honorific of the Mughal emperor, right? So these are very important, um, uh, you know, interventions that Ram Mohan Roy actually makes, uh, 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 you know, uh, to Akbar II. And the East India Company uh, officials uh, in Kolkata, which was their headquarters at this point, uh, 
uh, uh, turned the matter so that Akbar II actually was forced to, um, um, uh, you know, um, withdraw uh, his, um, um, uh, or rather uh, put a question mark, not really withdraw, but put a question mark on whether uh, Ramun Roy could go to England as his official ambassador or not, right? So there was this very important question mark. Uh, which Akbar II was forced to put on an official position that Ram Mohan Roy could have occupied uh, 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 when he, uh, uh, you know, aborted the Albion in 1831. Uh, and uh, this was, um, um, uh, you know, finally, uh, you know, Ram Mohan Roy uh, quite clear that he was uh, being uh, hamstrung by the East India Company officials and perhaps his departure to England. He was very, very keen to actually see uh, the procedures, the, uh, uh, you know, the representative uh, uh, political procedures in the parliament. Uh, he wanted to see the reform bill uh, 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 debates uh, being, uh, uh, you know, being thrown open uh, in the parliament, in the House of Commons, in the House of Lords. And therefore he was uh, very, very uh, uh, keen to uh, leave behind these nitpicky, um, uh, you know, um, debates uh, whether he could go as ambassador or not, and he decided to go as a private individual, but he promised Akbar II that he would anyway without, with or without uh, the official uh, position, uh, uh, he would uh, represent his case, which he did. Okay, uh, 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 so much so that uh, it, it, uh, around, it was, it was uh, on the basis of this that he was, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, he was, he was uh, officially uh, later on recognized as the subject of Akbar II. Uh, and, and it is at this point that we begin to see a very important, uh, uh, you know, a double, uh, 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 you know, a, a, a kind of a kind of a twin twinning uh, of of uh, the notion of subject, uh, which is being bestowed on him by Akbar the Second and uh, uh, Ramun Roy's own understanding of a, 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 a subject position of a subject which is very definitely uh, uh, Asian. We will speak about these locations uh, in a bit. Uh, it not only, uh, you know, uh, mm, 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 you know uh, is it, is it uh, a very Asian concept because he is uh, very clear that in France, in England, uh, it is not, uh, you know, just the position of a subject that people under uh, these Western countries occupy, they occupy, um, uh, you know, in the political uh, arena, the position of a participating subject in modern terms, a citizen. And, and it is this very important uh, uh, loading of, of uh, the political position of an individual in Asia, uh, you will find that uh, um, uh, Ram Mohan Roy doesn't use the word India so much. He uses a far more generic and a far bigger spa spatial location for uh, 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 understanding uh, the, the location of uh, uh, himself, Ram Mohan Roy. He constantly says, uh, he constantly repeats uh, the word Asiatic. He constantly repeats another very important uh, uh, Western reference, which is Oriental, right? So please do remember that these are um, uh, uh, very important notions of space, very important notions of territory. And uh, India at this point is not really uh, in uh, the uh, imagination of Roy so much. Uh, uh, when he talks in terms of different regional, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, characteristics uh, which uh, uh, define um, uh, political cultures, which also define the nature of the state. 
now we come to uh, the uh, way Ramun Roy understands the nature of the state. And uh, we find that uh, uh, Ramun Roy is beginning to replicate. So while the notion of sovereignty is a very non-colonized position in Ram Mohan Roy's uh, um, interior, right? You know, he actually does not feel that he owes East India Company uh, loyalty as East India Company subject. Oh, no. Uh, we will come to this point a little later, right? Because I think we need to understand uh, a couple of other moves in the late 18th century, especially the hanging of Nand Kumar by the East India Company, by, by the uh, uh, um, Governor General uh, uh, representing the East India Company, Warren Hastings, right? Okay. And uh, uh, Warren Hastings had, uh, you know, had, had uh, uh, you know, uh, passed the sentence uh, on Nand Kumar uh, 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 through the machinations of uh, Impe, the Supreme Court uh, judge, uh, influencing him very heavily uh, in order to uh, uh, settle scores with Nand Kumar. So it was actually Warren Hastings who was responsible for the uh, uh, public hanging of Nand Kumar, a Brahmin. Uh, uh, which was also uh, seen to be quite, uh, so this was in 1775, um, uh, 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 almost 50 years after, uh, you know, Raja Ram Mohan Roy um, uh, 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 began to cogitate on the notion of what was or who was a subject uh, and uh, what did subjecthood entail for the uh, position of the individual vis-a-vis the state. And we find that in uh, uh, Nand Kumar's case, uh, uh, 50 years uh, pre previously, uh, slightly more than 50 years actually, uh, we find that uh, Nand Kumar also makes a similar uh, case that you know the East India Company has no right, no legal right to sentence him uh, to death uh, because he was officially uh, and and uh, uh, um, uh, you know it, 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 you know uh, it, you know not just uh, it, and uh, you know through his own loyalty he was actually the subject of the Mughal uh, emperor and uh, it was uh, um, you know a very quiet legislation passed three years before which actually dictated so this was actually a residential uh, uh, charter which said that any uh, a resident of Calcutta uh, uh, who had uh, bought uh, property, uh, uh, you know, um, on on uh, the the uh, site of Kolkata, territorial sites of Kolkata, would automatically fall under the jurisdiction of the East India Company, and Nand Kumar did not know this. Right? Okay. So he was actually uh, uh, caught. Uh, by uh, uh, a very little heeded uh, uh, legal uh, uh, precondition, uh, which uh, trapped him uh, into uh, falling into the jurisdiction of the East India Company, and uh, he uh, uh, he did not uh, manage to uh, free himself from this particular trap. He was hanged, right? Okay, so, but but. Interestingly, uh, Nand Kumar also had claimed um, uh, subjecthood under uh, uh, the Mughal emperor. And we find that Ram Mohan, 50 years down the line, is also beginning to uh, 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 tread both as uh, the uh, 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 subject of the Mughal uh, emperor or the king of Delhi, uh, take it as you will, and also uh, having the intellectual confidence to uh, advise the uh, uh, Mughal uh, emperor uh, to uh, take his case uh, to the um, source of British power, the king. And this is very central, uh, uh, the sovereign of, of England. All right, so this is very, very central. Um, now, let me, let me um, uh, uh, bring it back to uh, uh, the way, uh, to the way uh, you have uh, Ram Mohan Roy, uh, beginning in terms of the Asiatic location uh, within uh, uh, 
and within, within the state system, which is in many ways different from the liberal representative democracy of some Western countries. Um, right now, it's very fashionable to claim um, there is uh, Occidentalism and the understanding of, of the Occident uh, always uh, uh, projects uh, non-Western countries, especially the East and the East, as the Orient. And it is always the um, uh, projection of the other, right? Okay, so this is something which is uh, uh, almost uh, a truism. And, and uh, there is, uh, uh, therefore, uh, in, in the way scholarly discourses turn, there is Occidentalism and there is, uh, 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 you know, an Orientalist discourse, which, uh, uh, reflects, which reflects how the Occident uh, uh, thinks uh, or, or brackets the uh, uh, Orient, the non-West. And uh, we find uh, uh, that uh, Ramun Roy, uh, because he is um, um, in that period, is producing these very powerful rhetorics of uh, the Oriental despot, the Orient as the other of the Occident, he does use these terms but he uses these terms uh, uh, with, uh, with many, many qualifications. And uh, I would like to bring uh, a discussion two very important names, scholarly names. Uh, of course, uh, I, I uh, know that Sarkar uh, and the uh, analysis of Ramon's contribution to quality, or perhaps uh, the slightly exaggerated claims of, of uh, scholars uh, about uh, Ramon Roy's contribution to. Uh, so this is a very familiar uh, uh, analysis, which I really don't want to dis, you know, to to uh, bring to this particular discussion. Instead, I would like to bring. Uh, Sabya Sachi Bhattacharya's understanding of the Renaissance man, uh, where he locates um, uh, Ram Hun Roy's uh, understanding of his political standing vis-a-vis -vis the East India Company and Akbar II, and how he actually expands the notion of the uh, subject to, uh, uh, to, to uh, hold out the possibility that there is bound to be a new way in which a subject can, instead of being a passive uh, receptor of royal commands, actually can participate in the process of governance, can participate in the uh, making of policy, can participate not as the prime minister, not as the uh, 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 person uh, close uh, to the seat of power, but as an ordinary person who uh, can use the new public space, can use the new uh, uh, print culture in order to build up a new understanding of the civil. Uh, uh, I, I feel that, you know, uh, again, I have to be a little careful in the way I throw around the word civil society as something which is generic in uh, the 1820s, it's not. Uh, uh, civil society is a very, very thin layer uh, it, in Calcutta, not just, not, not even in Bengal, but in Calcutta, right? So uh, perhaps civil society will be a grand misnomer. And the uh, same uh, with the claim of a new public sphere, right? Okay, we can claim that there is uh, the beginning of a new public, 
but whether it would be uh, 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 understood as uh, uh, following the trajectory of the Western public sphere is again a, a very, very um, a misleading, uh, you know, a very misleading uh, concept, uh, or very misleading assumption, I would say. Uh, so, but but the beginnings, uh, Roy does note, right? Okay, and uh, 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 you find uh, that um, uh, to bring a little bit of uh, my um, uh, my my sense of other scholars, right? Uh, there is uh, another very young scholar who has looked at the notion of. Uh, uh, Ramhun Roy and his intense concern with the uh, uh, making of a new uh, 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 community of subjects, uh, which uh, or who should be uh, ethical, uh, who should uh, be uh, in a way uh, um, uh, um, cognizant of the modern trends of participating in policy, participating as ordinary people, uh, uh, who are literate, who are uh, rational, and who can weigh up the actions and the uh, 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 political uh, positions of the uh, government and uh, uh, begin to develop a due pressure, a due, a due, um, um, uh, 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 you know, um, influence uh, in order to in order to attract uh, the more beneficial, the more uh, um, positive uh, 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 policies, which would improve the uh, 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 lives, uh, which would improve the economic uh, uh, conditions, uh, the uh, political conditions of the Indian uh, subjects. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, I, I would I would like to I would like to give this um, very important caveat, right? Okay, uh, where you find that Ramun Roy constantly uh, uh, relates the Asiatic and the Indian to the Orient. Right, and he also shifts between the oriental uh, nature of governance, which he, uh, after the uh, uh, Indological scholarship, uh, he says is arbitrary uh, as compared to the uh, liberal, rational, uh, participative government of the West, Western countries. Of these, he obviously thinks of two countries as central to the uh, um, uh, uh, new window that opens out onto a, a very, very explosive, explosively different West, uh, France and England. Uh, he also keeps uh, uh, his uh, um, sights on the Americas. He also keeps his sight on the uh, revolutions fought for independence in South America. Uh, in fact, he is a very cosmopolitan uh, man uh, as far as his uh, uh, understanding of the Asiatic location within the globe goes. Um, if we look at some of his um, remarks, we find that he is very clear that uh, there is a very new um, experience awaiting him in the West. From 1823 onwards, he is very keen to uh, go to personally visit the West. And please, I hope that uh, no one has forgotten that uh, the 19th century is actually the time 
when the ban on foreign travel is made into a very important cultural divide between the East and the West. We do not know, uh, 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 you know, uh, how uh, uh, the Brahminic uh, uh, dictates uh, on, on maritime trading uh, communities uh, uh, had, you know, um, uh, you know, had uh, affected uh, their caste status uh, in uh, uh, their uh, home regions. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Rajat Datta and other medieval scholars uh, 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 like Ranavi Chakravarti uh, do indicate that uh, this was a very important caste divide where communities who were um, allowed to travel uh, were uh, uh, in a very, um, you know, in a, in, a, in a way permitted by their caste. And if we actually turn to our folk tales, including the, um, you know, the Quranic, uh, you know, uh, 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 backdrop to Bengal, we will find that uh, folk tales, especially if you look at um, something as, as uh, um, uh, you know, um, how shall I put this, something as uh, uh, simple as fairy tales uh, written uh, in the early um, 20th century, late 19th century, so Dada Mushat Thule um, or, or say Chakumar Juli, you will find that travel uh, and, and uh, uh, trade are always linked. Right. Okay. And if you also look at um, uh, Behula Lakhinder's uh, lore, you will also find that Charles Shodagar, uh, uh, you know, is is a trader. Right. Okay. Uh, so there is this uh, there is this uh, very important connection of uh, the license to travel and uh, the fact that they are traders. Right. Okay. Uh, we do not really uh, get to see a very important. Uh, uh, aura of uh, um, permission uh, uh, given to um, um, upper, really, really upper caste, uh, um, you know, um, uh, individuals, uh, and and uh, this is where uh, sanctions and prohibitions kicked in. It was Ramun Roy who, from uh, the early nineteenth century, uh, tilted the balance and uh, uh, made this uh, very important uh, locution, right? Or, or the um, um, drive to uh, break these uh, taboos and, and uh, make travel um, a, a process of learning, a process of gleaning experience, also a process of broadening the spatial location of an individual where look, the, the uh, locus, uh, the small uh, 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 region or the small, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, village uh, is expanding into, uh, into the world, into the globe, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, the relative position of, of uh, an individual vis-a-vis -vis this, this enormous space uh, which uh, uh, an individual uh, cannot encompass uh, physically uh, 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 or, or logistically, uh, you know, is also part of a material reality. This is uh, a, a, a very important uh, Ram Hun Roy, uh, you know, move, uh, which uh, opened up the possibility of, of uh, um, expanding the possibilities of the individual who would, uh, 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 you know, uh, stretch out and who would uh, uh, connect to different uh, shores, to different cultures, to different geographies, to different climates, and uh, bring in a new imagination, which would uh, be called by people who participated in it, modern. Uh, and 
if we look at the um, Ramun Roy of the early uh, um, uh, of the of the seventeen nineties, seventeen ninety threes, seventeen tilting towards eighteen hundreds. We can actually, uh, if if uh, again his uh, uh, I think I think uh, do I have a little bit more time? Uh, I I'm not very sure. Should I should I uh, wind up? Uh, you can uh, so you, you can wind up by seven fifteen. Let's say in another ten minutes. Yes, I think I can do that. But, okay. but yeah, uh, so yeah, I think we, start, I, we started late. So yeah, I'm so sorry, but but let <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. We yeah. can wind up by seven. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so um, uh, th this is this is uh, something which you will find being reflected in Tottabodhini Potrika, uh, which is uh, uh, which is a very important journal uh, that is. Uh, are put in place by Devendranath Tagore. Um, there is uh, actually, uh, as I was going through Dr. Bodhini Putrika, I realized that almost all the, you know, the volumes contained some reference to the uh, enormous uh, path-breaking direction that Roy had given by connecting the globe and the presence of a global knowledge to the Bengali mind, right? Okay. And uh, while Tattabodhini Patrika seems to be more uh, for uh, a religious, for a spiritual uh, quest, but somewhere uh, it also reflects uh, the enormous expansion in the domains of, of knowledge that the Bengali mind was exposed to and the very important bursting in, uh, exploding almost uh, into Bengali consciousness of a very different set of uh, 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 cultural uh, realities that lay outside of uh, uh, the Bengali experience. And uh, uh, again, if one looks at uh, uh, the uh, biographies of Ram Mohan Roy, if one looks at his uh, letters, there is an enormous stress on how the developed West, and unfortunately, um, I, I feel that Ram Mohan did have a, um, uh, have a uh, perhaps a qualified opinion about the advances made in the West as compared to the um, Indian story. At the first instance, at the level of received knowledge, he located the nature of the popular culture or the people. And he somehow uh, before going to the West, uh, he had formed the impression that the general population in England or in very developed Western countries, France, for instance, actually had 100% literacy and quote unquote, coachmen read newspapers while waiting for customers to climb into their carriages. And if you think in terms of the time period, 1823, uh, there is an almost mythical element to this habit of reading. Uh, writing, reading, and the following, forget participation, but following of the political trends as a general feature of a culture was for him an enormous development against which he places 
the benighted condition of the illiterate masses of Bengali. And I would like to say that he does not actually refer to India. He actually talks in terms of the illiterate masses, right? Okay, uh, of of uh, 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 Bengal, or you know, and and he is uh, very very struck by the fact that uh, uh, um, uh, liberal, representative, democratic process, which orders the political in England is completely missing in India. And the young scholar, uh, Shomik Dasgupta, who is also looking at Ram Mohan Roy through uh, a, a, a very open uh, lens, uh, which does not look at his uh, uh, limits or looks at his, uh, uh, you know, um, retractions of a more radical position, which is what Sumit Sarkar is, uh, uh, you know, um, kind of talking about where he, uh, Sumit Sarkar would uh, look at uh, uh, his uh, uh, Tuhufat uh, uh, as a very radical text, which looks at, um, uh, you know, um, a, a very different understanding of a Godhead, which comes from uh, 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 intellectual following of the Islamic uh, civilization, Islamic notion of Godhead, and uh, you know the the later Brahminic uh, um, scriptural uh, position, which he pulls out to to attack Sati as a custom, uh, where uh, uh, you know uh, mm, a far more conventional uh, uh, space is afforded to. Um, uh, the locus standi of uh, scriptures like Manusmati uh, and other texts, right? Okay, and he considers uh, these two positions uh, to be to be actually uh, very different. Uh, the earlier, uh, uh, you know, stress on monotheism coming from an indigenous uh, culture, uh, uh, which uh, blends together a very radical intellectual position and, uh, uh, you know, the Islamic um, uh, influence uh, veers to the Brahminic and the scriptural tradition in order to attack, uh, you know, a, a very, very um, evil uh, uh, social right, uh, religious right. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, instead of going this way, uh, 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 Shomik Dasgupta is turning the argument towards the possibility, the, the future possibility of using the language of Ram Mohan Roy's uh, uh, understanding of a community who would be rationally, uh, uh, you know, empowered to think for oneself, but in an ethical dimension. Uh, religious uh, for, for uh, Ram Mohan is not necessarily dharmic, you know, it, it does not, it looks at a pathway, a pathway of an ethical self uh, that would uh, constantly be uh, 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 based upon um, a very important notion of what is just, not right. Uh, 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 Ram Mohan Roy's uh, understanding is not a right-based or an entitled-based uh, understanding of subjecthood. Uh, his understanding of subjecthood is based on what is just. And uh, in this context, uh, he also fits in um, uh, the, so, you know, instead of looking at uh, the Brahminic, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, scriptures as, as, um, uh, marking a regressive turn, it can be given a different twist by saying that even the Brahminic, even the Brahminic uh, scriptures actually have within it a position of the just which you can pull out. Right? So, in a way, he is actually. Uh, and he shows the pathway, the same similar intellectual pathway to Vidyasagar because Vidyasagar does exactly the same thing, right? So 
uh, in a way, he is also showing the possibilities of the texts. And, and he, I think, very importantly combines the nature of what is possible, what can be understood as just from within indigenous traditions, while also bringing to the table the Western concepts of participatory uh, 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 you know, uh, positions uh, with the, uh, the state uh, uh, on government policies and on the right of the individual to comment, to, to if possible, uh, 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 understand, comment, and if necessary, critique, right? Okay, the policies of the government so that the government will keep the welfare of the Indian subjects in mind, right? And he, uh, following Western traditions, feels that criticism, criticism is not, is not, is not sedition. Criticism of the government's policies is not, if we shift the locus a little further, we can say that it is not anti-national, right? It's a, it is very modern. It's an extremely modern observation that criticism is not sedition. Dissent is important and it will never bring down the affection for a government. And he constantly gestures to Western nations where a fully literate reading public can comment, can even criticize the sovereign and the government. Remember, he has separated the sovereign and the government and still be loyal, still be patriotic and still be a true British subject. Similarly, any kind of criticism in India, especially following the 1823 suspension of uh, the freedom of the press. This is what pinched uh, Ram Mohan Roy the most because he felt that civil liberties were the biggest rights, the biggest freedoms that the Indians had got even though they have lost political freedoms. Professor Mukhopadhyay, I'll ask you to wrap up now. Yes. You have yeah. already gone to 7.20. Yeah, so this is, uh, so this is where I, I uh, draw a line. And he actually said that despite the arbitrary nature of quote unquote oriental despotisms like the Mughals, like the Muslim Nababs in Bengal, they had always given political liberty. But it was, the loss of political liberty, which had entitled the Indians to claim civil liberties, which are very important entitlements, right? So here we come to a very important synthesis of the just, the nature of the just and the important rights of the citizen subject as a modern concept for Ramahundra. I hope that was clear. I hope that was um, uh, connected, uh, despite the slightly uh, delayed uh, appearance of the speaker, I really apologize for that. So thank, you. thank you, Professor Mukhopadhyay. So thank you, Professor Mukhopadhyay. Uh, thank you for giving us this most illuminating talk on Ram Mohan Roy and statehood. If there are any questions from anyone, uh, they can unmute themselves and ask the question to Dr. Mukhopadhyay. So do we have any questions? Um, oh dear. If anyone has any questions, they can unmute and ask. I will check the chat. Uh, there was no, nothing relating to a question over there. So, so since we do not have any questions, may I request Dr. Gurudas to kindly sum up? Yes. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank the Citizens Forum for the celebration of 
the 250th birth anniversary of Raja Ramon Rai, the whole group, and especially Srimati Sudakshina Kundu, who requested me to give the final remarks. Thank you very much uh, for the wonderful speech, uh, Professor Anindita uh, Mukhopadhyay. Uh, even though it was late, you know, like uh, though the speech was very intense, what stood out to me was that it was indeed Raja Ramon Rai's curiosity that led to me, led him being the intellect that he was. We have spoken extensively about his learnings, about other religions, but today we focused on how his learnings were beyond just religion. For one to think about just government. Yes, please. Can continue someone. For one to think about it. just governance and travel oceans to seek global knowledge on art and culture during the 1800s is simply remarkable. Correct. You actually like spoke about so many things about East India Company. I don't want to get into it, but what I can say is how ethical he is and how, what forethought and what farsightedness he had is wonderful. And you also pointed out that, you know, uh, how he overcame barriers through special skills of his, but I feel that, you know, he had a lot of linguistic skills and he was a very curious traveler. And what we can learn about Raja Ramon Rai is fine, you know, fine example is that we can gain what he actually like, you know, we have to uh, be, understand him that, you know, like it is knowledge yeah. and curiosity was more important. And, uh, and you also spoke about what education means, you know, and what media plays a big role. And if I think, think about today's social media, newspaper and everything, compared to developed and I know, developing countries. What comes to my mind is how it can instill hatredness by just, in, you know, the newspapers and social media and everything can instill so many things. And that is also one of the points which came to my mind. And uh, education is very important for, all, for uh, everything, you know, like it is for democracy, education means a lot. And uh, this is what it is, you know, like, uh, we thank you very much. And uh, I, I really appreciate your uh, great talk, intense, and, uh, you know, the way, how, what, how Raja Ram Mohan Rai thought those days. He had that farsightedness, you know, like he had, he knew what is going to come up today for India and how actually, like, you know, he worked for it. He traveled in spite of the barriers. He traveled to England. He traveled to France. He learned so many things. And uh, it's amazing. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you. Sir, can I respond to your comment? I, I, I found it so interesting because you actually spoke about his, you know, poly, he, he, he was a linguist, right? You know, yes, yes, uh, yes. before he traveled to France, he actually learned French, uh, number one. And number two, uh, he actually commented um, in a very, very critical way uh, on the new custom, uh, the new uh, um, political uh, procedure of all visitors to France requiring a passport. This is 1832. And oh. he said, a despotic region like Asia allows free movement of travelers throughout its territories. How come such an advanced Western country like France makes uh, uh, the traveler uh, go through this uh, cus this this uh, new uh, you know process of uh, uh, getting a passport. So there is this uh, there is this enormous uh, 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 critical faculty which uh, uh, Ramon Roy uh, Raja Ramon Roy brings to not just travel but also engaging with the different. Uh, political um, uh, uh, philosophies, political cultures of Western countries and yes. critically assess. Uh, yes. He is not, he doesn't consume modernism. He is, he is critical. He is highly critical. He actually uh, does not uh, uh, go by the projection of what 
Westerners say about the West. He is constantly weighing up what the Westerners have said and what he finds in the West, right? It is, you know, I wish we all had that innate uh, critical ability to engage with the world. I think this is what I would like to say that, you Thank know, you. cosmopolitanism is not about uh, uh, swallowing the world as the world. It is critically weighing the world and to, to, to understand uh, what are the good points and what are the bad points of that world? True, true, madam. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Gurudas. Thank, thank, thank you, sir. You, thank, you. thank you, everybody, for patiently, you know, uh, joining, waiting for the session and then hearing out Professor Mukhopadhyay. It was really an enriching session for all of us, and we hope to have such sessions in future as well. Thank you once again, and I'll end the session over here. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.